talking about all this America stuff, American Islam stuff, and I'm sure it makes a lot of people uncomfortable. Um, because a lot of them don't, don't really hear, they hear my words, but they don't hear my message. And I'm, I'm not blaming them. They don't hear my message because they don't know me. They don't, they, don't, they don't recognize the fact that, you know, if you're a convert, and I'm a black American male convert, and that very enterprise in and of itself has woven into the very warp and woof of its, its very existence, an ongoing, very deep and profound critique of America. So, you know, my talking about America, American Islam, and the fact that Muslims have to get Islam and its, its tradition, its holy book, its sunnah, its, 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 its genius to speak effectively to the realities that define their lives as Americans. When I, when I say that, many people hear, you know, assimilation. Um, they hear, you know, you know, bowing to the dominant culture. And that, that's not at all what I, what, I, what I mean. And the reason I know that this sounds so uncomfortable for them is that it used to sound the same way to me. <laughs> and astaghfirullahaladzim, <laughs> you know, you know, it makes me really, you know, embarrassed and sad to even think this. I remember when I was a young convert in Philadelphia back in uh, the 19, the late 1970s. I was three years old, man. I'm joking. <laughs> uh, I remember one of the major controversies we had was with Imam W.D. Muhammad. Rahimahullah. And the controversy was his insistence on putting the American flag on the front of their newspaper. And for many of us, this was anathema of the first order. This, this proved to us that, you know, these people have still not fully entered into Islam. And that's why I say, I, I know how all this America stuff I talk now sounds to a lot of people because it used to sound the same way to me. But you asked me a specific question. I learned <laughs> that I was an American when I went abroad, when I went to the Muslim world. That's when I really discovered that I was an American. And I think that, you know, if I had a gazillion dollars, you know, we could solve a lot of this this dissonance and dislocation. You know, six months in the Muslim world, Muslims in America will discover that they really are American. And there's nothing wrong with that. And in the same way that if you're an Egyptian, you don't agree with everything about Egyptian society, you don't agree with everything about Egyptian politics, you don't agree with everything about Egyptian foreign policy, um, I see no reason for me to bear that, that, that burden as an American. And I think it's, you know, it's a sad fact that Muslims have become so you know, overly politicize a politics just so saturates their, their, their psyche that they can't think outside of purely political, political terms. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure that, you know, despite the fact that, you know, Mecca was a, 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 a pagan capital that, that prosecuted the prophet and, and, and turned him out and, and turned the Muslims out, I'm sure the Sahaba missed Mecca. I'm sure they missed Mecca. That was their home. You know, one of my favorite poems in Arabic, uh, I'll say the poem. I don't know if I should share it in Arabic or English. Uh, in Arabic, it's ذلك الطفل الذي كنت أتاني مرة وجها غريبا لم يقو شيئا مشينا وكنانا يرمق الآخر في صمت جمعتنا باسم ذلك ورك الضرب في الريح الأصول ثم افترقنا غابة تكتبها الأرض وترويها الفصول أيها الطفل الذي كنت تقدم ما الذي يجمعنا الآن وماذا سنقول That child who once was me came to me once in a strange face He didn't say anything We just looked at each other and then walked along the way we were joined together in the name of that 
leaf that dangles in the wind by our roots. Then we departed and we went into a jungle whose author is the earth and whose narrator is the seasons. O oh, child who once was me, come forward now. What is it that joins us together still? And what shall we say to each other? Hmm. So in a sense, that's another way of saying, you know, the man grows up to be the child. That, you know, all the ambitions, all the dreams, all of the hoped for possibilities, those are developed in childhood. Hmm. My childhood was here. You know, the things that shaped me fundamentally are here. The things that I want to actualize most come out of, you know, a rearing, an experience, a dream.